Hello students, welcome to grade 10 science class. I am your teacher, Marisol Castillo. In today's lesson, we will discuss about the location of earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain ranges. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to describe and relate the distribution of active volcanoes, earthquakes, and epicenters in major mountain belts to the theory of plate tectonics. So, let's start. You have learned from your past science lessons that the Philippines is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. This means that our country and other places located at the Ring of Fire experience earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and other tectonic activities. How are volcanoes, mountains, and other geologic features formed? Let's study first the Earth's lithospheric part. Earth's lithosphere consists of layers, the crust, and the upper part of the mantle. The crust is made of a variety of solid rocks like sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. It has an average density of 2.8 gram per cubic centimeter, and its thickness ranges from 50 kilometers. Okay, look at this picture. What makes this map different from other maps? This map shows the outer shell or outer layer of the earth, which is the lithosphere, is broken up into tectonic plates. The broad line represents the tectonic boundaries. But who proposed the idea of tectonic plates? Do you know who proposed the idea of tectonic plates? It was proposed by a German geophysicist named Alfred Wagner. He said that the continents fit together like pieces of jigsaw puzzle. This theory is called the theory of plate tectonics. This contains the key principles that can explain the tectonic and geologic processes that occur on Earth. He also theorized that in the past, the continents were once joined as a single supercontinent called Pangea, or of the Earth. This theory was ignored for many years, but as science and technology advanced, they collected some evidence that support that theory. And that's how the idea of plate tectonic created. Okay, the Earth has small and large plates. There are seven relatively large plates and several smaller ones, including the Philippine plate. Can you recall the seven large plates? These include African plate, Antarctic, Eurasian, North American, South American, India Australian, and the Pacific Plates. These tectonic plates float above the asthenosphere. When you say asthenosphere, it is the upper part and the hotter part of the mantle. It could be found below the lithosphere. It is deformable due to the heat and pressure in the mantle. It could be compared to a butter. It is a semi-solid and when heat is applied, it melts. Okay, what do you think are the basis of scientists in marking the plate boundaries? Let's examine the following maps. The first map shows 
the distribution of major earthquakes or epicenters. The second map shows the distribution of major active volcanoes. The third map shows the distribution of mountain belts in the world. And lastly, the fourth map shows the major plate tectonics. Now, let's put together the maps. Do you notice anything? Can you tell now the basis of our scientist in marking the plate boundaries? If your answer is the places of Earth where most of the earthquakes originated or some mountains and volcanoes were formed, mark the boundaries of each lithospheric plate, then you are correct. To summarize what you have learned in today's lesson, plates are large pieces of the upper few hundred kilometers of Earth that move as a single unit as it floats above the mantle. The plates are in constant motion as they interact along their margins. Important geological processes take place, such as the formation of mountain belts and volcanoes. I hope you enjoyed and learned something today. Thank you for watching and see you in our next lesson.